we're talking with Darren Paul, owner, uh, horse owner here. And Dara, you know, all the talk here, especially in the industry itself, is the new HISA regulations. Just kind of briefly, can you just give us an overview of, of what that really means to, to horse racing here in Washington State? Well, it's it's a, in my opinion, you know, classic overreach of, of big government that is going to be drilled down onto smaller markets like Washington and create some financial, really some financial uh, despair with the owners, the farms. There's, uh, there's a lot of administrative costs, and there's really not a plan for enforcement. There's not a plan for the setup of, uh, of the governance of the rules for the smaller states. And, you know, they're hitting Emerald Downs with a big bill. They're hitting all the tracks in the smaller states with a big bill. And some of the states have pushed back pretty hard. You know, we're not really in a position to put push back. Um, and it's, you know, I think... a. A lot of the owners are offended. I mean, for me, I love my horses. Nobody's going to take better care of, of a horse than I am. And there's this world view that we're all a bunch of dopers and, you know, we drug our horses and do all this stuff. And, you know, the truth of the matter is our horses are probably better taken care of than, than most people's daily pets. Um, so it's it's really, a, it's really a tough thing for the industry. Um, You have some rules that are on the riders that are going to be different. You have a rider that's ridden for 25 years, and now there's a a whip limitation, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but the riders will be getting fined if they they touch the horse more than six times. If they touch a horse a tenth time, then the owner loses the purse, which is really unfair because the owner has no control over what's going on, you know, during a race, etc. So it's it's really a... it's one of these things that got rolled out, they put a deadline on it, and they rolled it out in, in a fashion that nobody's really ready for it, nobody really understands it, and oh, by the way, it started today. <laughs> so it was, you know, fire-ready aim for this whole thing. It's not it's not with bad intentions that, that they're doing this government, governance, but it's, it's really with with poor execution of the, of the rule. It just, I mean, it just passed in 2020. That's yes. when they got it pushed through. It's only been two years. That may seem like a long time, but when you're trying to deal with a whole new entity, this is a startup entity from the, the ground floor up. Seems like, there, there, I mean, there's more planning going into a local supermarket uh, uh, for a, a single store than, than, than uh, it is for an industry nationwide. Sure, and, and I mean, this has done a, an admirable job of running around to the tracks at the 11th hour trying to get the word out, but that's really what it is. It's the 11th hour. It was something that was put into the COVID financing that you know President Trump signed off on, but it was part of a bigger bill, and nobody could really vote against the COVID relief bill, so it got pork barreled in there, and you know, if it had been a standalone bill, these types of things have never passed. But unfortunately, you know, Mitch McConnell endorsed it, threw it into the COVID bill, and, and here we are, you know, the smaller markets really paying the price. Now, Oregon has basically said they're not gonna they're not gonna abide by it. Texas isn't gonna abide by it. There's a current uh, suit by by Louisiana and West Virginia, which actually Manchin and, and Senator Kennedy are both behind. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, but they just they just have not organized this well enough for people to really know what's going on. And there's a there's a lot of hidden things. There's a lot of, of really difficult things with this, with medications and, and medications on the farm, and you know simple things that you would keep at your farm for colic and, and general well-being of the horse that have misnomers and uh so it's 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 really going to create challenges for for the horse industry is the is the the lasting hope i guess here is that after this is this is like you said being implemented starting tonight uh across the country that maybe a couple of months in this they can see that there are bigger problems that they can stop and, and take a look at this a little deeper or, or at least be flexible enough to, to make changes on the way here? Or do you think it's kind of, this is it? 
you know, I, I think it's a snowball rolling downhill and it's already, the momentum's already there. It's, it's, it's kind of here and we're going to have to deal with it. Um, you know, there are some things that, you know, some suits that are, that are in play that, that could, you know, force it to, uh, to change. But at this point, it, it looks like it's, it's here on us and we just have to, we just have to adapt. Have to figure it out. Exactly. All right, Darren, thank you so much. You bet.